Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Structure and Function, Level 2, Complex Structures. You can see we're going to be doing some modeling, so I'll get this whiteboard out of the way. Um, after watching this video, you should be able to identify interacting structures and complex structures like a can opener or in a cardiovascular system. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking using a rack and pinion, and then we'll think together using an adjustable spanner or a crescent wrench. Um, the first thing you want to do when you're looking at complex structures is first identify the system. What are we going to investigate? Um, in the last video we talked about how structure um, determines function and function depends on structure. But what we're adding is multiple structures working together in something called a complex structure. And how can that complex structure have an overall function? Now the object that represents structure and function are these two blocks where they represent structure and function. But what we now have is a complex structure. Not only do we have these two blocks, but these blocks contain magnets. And so that's another structure that's important in how this fits together. So I'm going to put together a rack and pinion, and then we'll do some thinking together. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're looking for complex structures is you want to identify what's the system you're going to investigate. So this first example, we're going to investigate a rack and pinion. So this is a rack and pinion right here. The rack is the top part, and the pinion is going to be this gear down at the bottom. And so the first thing we want to do is see how it works. And so when I turn the gear at the bottom, you can see that the top or the rack is going back and forth. And so let me identify the overall function. So the overall function is to move the rack back and forth. So this complex structure, the overall function is to just move this piece back and forth. The next thing I want to do is identify what are all the structures within this complex structure. So I'm going to list those out over here. So the big structures that are a part of this complex structure are the rack, uh, the pinion, which is going to be this bottom gear part, the board, which is white, and then the pins, which are going to be these two orange parts. So now I've identified the structure, but I want to describe what the structure is. And so sometimes it's easier to just pull this apart, but what I'm going to do is look at how this is made, remember what are the shapes, and then also how is it made, what it's made up of, and then I'm going to list that next to the structures. Okay, now I've defined all the parts of the complex structure. The rack is this rigid lateral wood gear. It's got an opening in the middle. We've got the circular wood gear with a handle, a flat wood board with three holes, and the pins are two plastic screws. And so hopefully you see what I'm writing down here. Not only what is the shape, but what is the material? What is it made up of? The next thing I'm going to do is organize these so we can start seeing how they all interact to create this function. Okay, what I really have now is a way to show how are these all interacting? How is the pinion connected to the board, connected to the rack? And so what I'm going to think is if this is a structure and this is a structure, what is the connection between the two? So what's the relationship between those two? And I'm going to draw those interactions in. Okay, so the relationships, I have the, the main point of the board, this white board, is to secure both the pinion, the pins, and the rack. So it holds it in place. Um, you can see when I turn the pinion, that moves the rack, which moves back and forth. And so you can see that these arrows are really showing cause. When I move this, then it's causing that to move. I can also start thinking about what would happen if I were to remove some of the structures. So if I were to remove the pins, if I I remove the pins, what's going to happen to the rack and pinion? Well, using my model right here, it should restrict the motion of the rack. And so if that's not here, I still should be able to move the rack, 
but it's not going to stay within that point. And so that's a complex structure. Again, what are the steps that I went through? First of all, I identified what are all the structures within the complex structure. Um, then I see how all they're connected and how they lead to this eventual function. And so that was the first one. What I'm going to do is clear this off and then you're going to show, my, show, you, show me your thinking using uh, Crescent Wrench. Okay, now that I've showed you my thinking using complex structures and the rack and pinion, we're going to try to do the same thing using this adjustable spanner. So um, since you're not here with me, let me show you uh, some of the parts of the adjustable spanner and how it works. And so there is a thumb screw here so I can use my thumb to just move that screw back and forth and hopefully you're seeing what's happening as I move it in one direction they get closer and closer together these two jaws and then as I move it in the other direction they get farther and farther apart and so what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to put down all of the structures that are an important part of this complex structure Okay, the five structures that I think are an important part of this are the handle. This is this part right here. The fixed jaw, which is the top part of the wrench. The worm screw, which is right here. The pin, which is, we call this an internal structure. It's on the inside. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it's holding that worm screw in. And then we have this adjustable jaw down on the bottom. So what I'd love to have you do is write down using the thinking slides below or a piece of paper, write down how you think all of these structures are interconnected or what are the relationships between them that give us this overall function. Remember, the first thing you should always do is describe each of those. So pause the video, go do that, and then come back and I'll show you my thinking. Okay, what I'm going to do is, first of all, start by writing down a description for all the complex structures. Okay, now that I've described all of the parts or the structures in the complex structure, I also want to list the overall function. So the overall function is to have a wrench that has adjustable sizes. The next thing I'll do is I'll organize all of these structures on my thinking board. And when I do that, I try to organize it almost like it's designed on the object itself. So you can see that I've organized it so the handle is kind of on the left side, the fixed jaw is on the top and on the right side. It'll make more sense as I move towards a specific function. So now that I've put all of these structures, what I really want to do is start showing the relationships between each of these. A relationship will always be a connector and then some word so this reads like a sentence. So let me do that. Okay, so this is a complex structure. It's got all these individual structures and it really, I can read it almost like a sentence. So the handle holds the worm screw, which is used to adjust the adjustable jaw. Or the pin secures the worm screw. And so as I'm doing this, I can start thinking about um, what happens if I pull one of these out? So if I pull out the worm screw, how would that affect the overall system? So this is a complex structure. What makes it complex is its multitude of structures interacting together for this overall function. The easiest way to do it is to just describe all the structures and then just think about the relationships. So what I'd like to have you do next is try this on your own. Um, we put some thinking slides with a can opener below or the cardiovascular system. So the only way to really figure this out is to try it. Remember a complex structure is a number of structures that are interacting together and the whole job of that is to have a specific function. In other words, this is how it's made how it's put together and this is what it is or what it does. So that's structure and function, complex structures, uh, lesson two, and I hope that's helpful.